This is part five of Federalist number 16. I hope you've already listened to the other clips I have uh, regarding this, fer this Federalist paper, this Federalist paper and the others, because that way it will make sense, much more sense. Okay, I will start reading the paragraph and then we'll just discuss it. It seems to require no pains to prove that the state ought not to prefer a national constitution which could only be kept in motion by the instrumentality of a large army continually on foot to execute the ordinary requisitions or decrees of the government. And yet, this is the plain alternative involved by those who wish to deny it the power of extending its operations to individuals. Okay, this is what I said a few times in the previous clips, that in this federal list, he keeps on saying, if we want a federal union, if we want to be united and not constantly go to war against one another, be peaceful and prosperous, the laws that the Federal Union passes, the Federal Government's laws, okay, those should have the power of extending its operations to individuals. This is the line it uses. And I already said in the last clip, that means the Federal Government can force the person, regardless of whatever state he or she lives in to be answerable to the federal law. If he or she breaks the law, they will have to go to court and face the penalty or whatever the court decides. If a federal government has to go through states and go to the states and say, please help us catch this person or please help us uh, bring this person to law, then that union will not work. That union will not work because there will be all constantly doubt whether you can respect the laws of the federal government. And that doubt will bring with it a lot of other things and that will eventually cause war amongst the states. Such a scheme, if practicable at all, would instantly degenerate into a military despotism. See, he's got a very good point. He says, if you have to force every state to implement the federal law every time, if we have to force the states to respect the federal law, then we'll just constantly have to have a larger army, a larger, bigger army. And we have already talked in one of the other Federalist papers, that we remember that when you have a large standing army on land, that would eventually lead to despotism. You won't have freedoms. So he says, that is exactly what we do not want. We want to be, have a free country. We want to let our people continue doing what they're doing to stay prosperous, keep their freedoms, to cherish their freedoms, and not live under tyranny. That can be done only when you have a very, very small army, not a standing army. And here he says, if we have to constantly raise troops, raise sol bring soldiers in and enlarge the army so that we can enforce the law, because one state will say, no, I'm not going to respect the law, he says, Pretty soon, 
that will lead to despotism and that's not good for anybody. But it would be found in every light impracticable. The resources of the Union would not be equal to the maintenance of an army considerable enough to confine the larger states within the limits of their duty. Nor would the means ever be furnished of forming such an army in the first instance. Whoever considers the populousness and strength of several of these states singly at the present juncture, right now, and looks forward to what they will become even at a distance of a, of a half a century, will at once <clears throat> dismiss as idle and visionary any scheme which aims at regulating their movements by laws to operate upon them in their collective capacities and to be executed by coercion applicable to them in the same capacities. A project of this kind is little less romantic than the monster taming spirit attributed to the fabulous heroes and demigods of antiquity. It says, look at the big states right now. Pennsylvania, Virginia, New York, Massachusetts. Those were the four largest states. And some of the other states. He says, look at them now. If you constantly have to make the army larger, a bigger army, to force them to listen to you, you will have a lot of problems. He says you will really, really have huge problems in half a century. If you can do it even, that will, be, that will require a large, large army. And that with itself will bring war, multiple wars, anarchy. So he says, think about this. If you do not accept this new federal union, this strong federal union, you will gradually go to a state of constant war because sooner or later some of these big states, some of these bigger states are going to say, well, we don't want to follow anybody's law, we are our own masters, and the hell with the federal government, and they'll start wars which will not good, be good for anybody. But if we unite and gradually go towards the West and bring in new states, our union will be so strong that we will not need a standing army and we will just make our navy stronger and that will be great, as he has said in another Federalist paper, because they will respect our navy they will not come and force us to do things we do not want to do. They will do commerce with us on a just and fair basis. In other words, we will tell them, if you do not let us trade with you at your ports, on your islands, we are not going to let you trade with any of our states. And he says, in this union, we will be so strong that the other states, the other nations will respect us and will not treat us like a weak power that they can st step on us, trample on us anytime they want to. So the next paragraph, the sixth, sixth paragraph, even in those confederacies which have been composed of members smaller than many of our counties, the principle of legislation for sovereign states supported by military coercion has never been found effectual. It has rarely been attempted to be employed but against the weaker members and in most instances attempts to coerce the refractory and disobedient have been the signal of bloody wars in which one half of the confederacy has displaced its banner against the other half. He says even if you Forget the big states. Let's think about even if our states were very small, we will still have the same problem. 
we will have to send the army there to force them to comply with the federal law and gradually that will lead into a situation where there will be bloody civil wars some states will unite to fight against the other states and what's the use in that so he says either way union would be your best bet union will keep you freer union will keep you stronger and that's what we have to say we people of the planet earth have to say that in union we will all be stronger we will all be freer we will all prosper we will keep this planet healthy so that it can support life in general and our next generations in a great way we want to constantly think of next generations we want to constantly think of life on earth because like we've said many times we are strands in this web of life if we destroy some of the other species we will eventually be destroyed 